while we're waiting, since we've got a few minutes here, I'm going to go ahead and one more time, thank all the sponsors for the Evergreen Conference. Even doing this online requires a lot of support. And um, I'd like to thank Equinox and Emerald Data Networks and Mobius one more time for making this possible again this year. And I put the closed captioning link in the chat box if that's of interest to anybody. I've also noticed there's a closed captioning button on Hopin this year, which is nice. I'm going to follow that. The, the closed captioning link does allow you to um, see that in a different screen if you'd like. And I think Paula has joined us. Oh, great. Welcome, Paula. This is Jennifer. I should introduce myself to you. Hello. Hello. Hello there. I have already said my thank yous to the sponsors. So with that, I welcome Bill and Paula to talk a little about a project they're working on with automated shipment notifications. We're looking forward to that. So I am handing things over to you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Pull up my slides. Okay. Let's try to present that, see how it looks. Hey, it still worked. Oh, and it I have worked. to get the get the uh there we go. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> nice. Yes, thank you, Microsoft. That is um, exactly what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so um uh just to kind of set the stage a little bit about what we're talking about um when we posted or you know proposed the talk a few months back i think we both thought that this was going to be a, a, a done project and we're moving on to other stuff and let's just talk about this fun thing that we made um but what we found out uh in the meantime is that um there's still some rough edges still some things we have to figure out so this uh what we're talking about today is going to be both a look at this fun stuff we built presentation and a you know look at these look at these challenges we have look at the stuff we're still working through to um you know to make the best use of of this new feature that we're talking about um so we're talking about um automated shipment notifications so this is part of the acquisitions workflow um, i'm going to get into the technical bits uh in a second uh but i thought um i would give uh paula a chance just to maybe um cue this up as well from the perspective of staff and kind of why we went down uh, this direction of wanting to look at uh, this new acquisitions feature. Yeah, so um, the main way this was presented, um, I just newly joined CMS again. I was here before and came back. So when I first joined, this is my first project management. Um, Tracy Thompson, our new director here in CMS, had used ASN at Pierce and wanted to um, bring it in and implement it here. So the main goals are that, um, you know, we're always looking for improvements, um, but the main goal for this was to improve the turnaround time for our books and to decrease the amount of time that they're in the building um, so that they're out quicker to patrons, um, which would allow us to spend less money on purchasing more copies for more holds. Um, and then, uh, the kind of smaller goals are we we were manually receiving each each title each order each copy um, using a, a button in our internal evergreen system so ASN does all that for us once we scan the barcode so everything's received in a split second as opposed to one person manually receiving everything um, and ASN is really fitting into a larger goal of of the quick turnaround time and just streamlining and improving our workflow processes as they stand so we we have a couple of internal processes that i've listed there um, pitch request purchase alerts and with that is our ads which is just additional copies of things so asn mostly impacts those and we work a lot with those workflows that's so that's a lot of the stuff that we're trying to figure out that's still kind of um in the the messy or the adventurous phase <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of where we're at with that So what are we talking about as far as Evergreen is concerned? Um, there is a project page 
or a launch pad page, I should say, uh, open for this project that we're working on. Um, uh, one nine five two nine three one, and um, it does have a pull request. It's currently targeted at the next release of Evergreen, presumably three dot ten. Um, and as I've noted on the launch pad side, I just need to add some release notes. That's the otherwise the code is is ready, minus any other things that we kind of come along as uh, Paula and the rest of the team are are using the new features. And I'm going to bounce around a little bit here, so just bear with me. Um, so this is a new EDI message in Evergreen. And for those of you who aren't particularly familiar with EDI, it allows us to automate certain aspects of the acquisitions workflow. The um, What we already have today in Evergreen is the ability to send orders to vendors. And we have the ability to receive order responses from vendors. And these responses will be things like, you ordered 10 copies, we have five, five are on back order. And then the final one that's currently available today is the invoicing. So these will be the actual, you know, pay us now message. So what we're talking about adding is this new EDI message, DESADV, which, you know, doesn't mean a lot to any of us, I don't imagine. Um, it's a new message type and its purpose is basically to say, uh, okay, you know, you sent your order, we told you what we have, and then here we're going to send you another message saying, okay, we shipped these items. So the message just says, it's, it's really a, a pretty basic message. It just says, um, you know, you order these line items, uh, we're shipping X number of copies of these items in this box. And it's going to be in the same box with these other copies of these other line items. And we're also going to tell you what the barcode is on the side of the box. And this will be an actual physical barcode that's, you know, right on the outside of the box that once it, you know, when, when you're unpacking the box from the pallet or whatever, you can wand the barcode and scan that in and then pull up information about everything in the box. So another way, you you know, we often talk about that. It's like a sort of a super barcode, a barcode that is, you know, encompasses a bunch of individual items. Um, I, th I thought I should at least show some EDI so that you could all enjoy its glory. Um, the uh, the message type is similar to an invoice, is similar to an order response. Um, the type of content is going to be very similar. The only real uh, change here is there's a new, um, oh, you look at that. I didn't even show the most important field, which would be the uh, super barcode field. But you'll see the purchase order number, and then you'll see some kind of identifier for the line item. And then you'll see here we ordered, um, I think that's quantity type 12, four copies, kind of, and then two copies on here. And this will just repeat and repeat and repeat on down the uh, on down the list for everything that's in the actual package. Um, and for anyone who really wants to know more, there is a spec on the editor site, E-D-I-T-E-U-R.org, which is where I, it's what I use as a reference for EDI messages. So you can actually see the, um, the documentation there. And interestingly, this is the only one that's not under the standard library processing list of EDI, it's under some other list. And it's not widely implemented uh, by uh, acquisitions vendors on the library side. Uh, and I'll get a little bit more into that in a, in a second. So um, I also added some screenshots, but I thought, you know, we're all friends here. Why don't we just try some demos and see if that works? Um, so I'll just pull up the screenshot there anyway. So um, I have my testing cluster, not my, the KCLS testing cluster up here. So I can try to do a couple of quick demos, just kind of see how this works. So we added a menu item here for receive shipment. And then I have some barcodes in the database here. Those. Um, and by default, it has receive on scan check. I'm going to disable that for this purpose. Um, and this is an example of a barcode that you see on the side of a package. So submit that. Um, it's going to pull up vendor information, information about when this particular shipment arrived, um, whether or not it's been processed yet, 
and then some other debugging information. And then it lists all the individual line items that are represented in the shipment. And then we have a nice um, breakdown of you know, copy level status information for the order. So um, this is a kind of a good example. So in this case, this line item, we ordered six and there are six in the shipment, ordered 15 on this one, but there are only 13 in the shipment. So um, presumably we're gonna get another ASN message later with the other two. Um, or they could be delayed or some other, but at this point we're expecting them, but we've only got 13 of them. From here, you can, of course, jump off to look at PO information, line item specific information. And um, if in case you need to assess something about the line item here. And then if we want to receive, um, there's a dry run option. That's going to show you what will happen without actually making any database changes. So I'll go ahead and do that. So what it's doing right now on the back side, it's doing the same as if you went over here and clicked mark received, mark received, mark received, mark received, all the way on down for all of the line items that are represented in this shipment. So um, and then it gives us a report of the activity. Six are in the shipment, six were received. 13 were in the shipment, 13 are marked as received, so there's no issues, exception here. This is what we would expect it to look like. And since this is the testing cluster, I'll go ahead and do the actual receive. It's going to look the same. But uh, so here we actually receive the items. And if I go and refresh, it's up here, and it's going to show these items as received, and I can then unreceive them if I need to. Um, I'm not watching chat or anything, so if there's any questions, uh, feel free to. Yeah, get Jennifer my asked, do alert messages appear as part of the dry run? Clarify alert messages. What, what are you expecting to see? One thing I can say is, um, if we know to, if 13 were in the shipment but we were only able to receive 10 um, for whatever reason, then there would be, you know, it'd be sort of bright red and there'd be an indication here that there was a problem. And then from there, you can go over to the line item and try to figure out why the shipped amount doesn't match the received amount. Um, she says, line item alert messages that appear when you receive, ah. if you set an alert for that line item. Ooh, uh, no, uh, that, no, that's never come up. I could see that being useful. Does that seem useful from your workflow, Paula? I'm writing it down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it does. See, I, th this is a this is part of the why I'm glad we're talking about this is because yeah. it is so new. Um, there's a lot of stuff we can probably learn from from everyone here. Yeah, I think that would actually be really great. Um, and then Deborah says. Very excited. This is being developed for Evergreen. My library formerly used ASN processing. It really speeds up receiving materials with the scan of one barcode. All items in the box instantly go from on order and process. Yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing here too is um, receiving wasn't always the longest part of the process, um, but it's one of those little clicks that adds up over time. And especially just the unpacking part, we no longer have to follow some internal workflows that we had following the invoices and following a certain order so we can do our loose sorts directly on the trucks instead of that kind of stuff so there there's some some speed that we're getting from that um and then another alert question is will alerts like speed receive for srp or patron hold request and i think that's kind of that's kind of what i wrote down um those kind of alerts would be handy like if it came in and it was our we call them rush rush orders usually or lucky day if it popped up and said lucky day i know there's other ways we can find that but if it popped up on the screen that would be extra helpful to know and just in case we miss it um oh and carol says simply changing the color to red isn't accessible which is a very good point um yep. is this used instead of receiving items within the invoice before closing it no, they all get marked received, but we still, what we do is the invoices then go from the shipment directly to our invoicing specialist and she processes and closes them. So they're all marked received much faster. And so we can actually, our turnaround time for invoices has gone from close to a month or more to 
you know, a few days, if that. So she receives them and processes them usually the same day that we unpack them. And so that's really helping with encumbrances and just paying vendors on time. Um, if I say receive all items and there's a problem with one of the line items, does it halt the whole operation and throw an error or anything? That I have not seen yet, Tiffany. And that's kind of one of the things we're working through is the only exceptions that show really, um, well, it shows, you know, how many they sent in the shipment and then how many they say are in the box. So it's really just telling me the same information. It's like, it's me just telling myself, I sent you five, you should have five. So we've only come across a couple times where that's wrong and it hasn't shown up. And we're still not sure if that's um, like user error, if we're missing the copy or not. So that's one of the, the more um, nebulous aspects of it is the exceptions aren't really, we haven't really standardized that yet or have made that super clear. And I can confirm that if there's a, if, if four were in the shipment, but only two were received, it doesn't stop the entire receive process. It just indicates in this printout here that something isn't right. Uh, it doesn't stop everything though. Uh, right. Thank I you can, for, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I could see that, you know, I could see that being a useful addition though, a stop on error type of checkbox or something. Um, doesn't it require you to trust the vendor's lift of shipped items is accurate? Yes, absolutely. And that's one of the bigger <clears throat> just cultural shifts that we're looking at is um, you can tell people to stop quantity counting, but you can't actually make their brain stop doing it, especially if it's a habit that they've had for you know many, many years. <clears throat> and I do still use the invoice to check the larger quantities to make sure that I have enough space on trucks for a rough sort. So we haven't standardized really even that yet either. Um, I don't usually work in unpacking, but right now I'm kind of the main unpacking person. So um, it's a little fly by the seat of our pants right now. And so far we have, I think we found one or two where the vendors list doesn't match. Um, and right now it's just Baker and Taylor and they are always good about getting us replacement copies. So right now we're kind of balancing when do we want to report exceptions? Do we want do we want unpackers to count and verify right at unpacking? Do we want to kind of do a rough sort and verification and let it go through, you know, until possibly until the very end when people are putting labels on it and then notice there's pros and cons to each. And we've just started having that discussion. So yeah, the trust is <laughs> it's, a, it's a discussion we're having. So yeah, that's a big part of it too. Thank you, Mary, for that question. I think that, that catches us up with chat questions anyways. Awesome. I will bring, so um, that was really the extent of the anything I wanted to demo. Was there something while I have the screen up that anyone wanted to see before I move on to the slides? Because it really is a, one of the beauties of this to me uh, from a developer perspective is it's very simple. It, it only, you know, we only collect a certain amount of data from the vendor. We display that data in a pretty concise way. And one of the, beauties of it to me is that unlike some of the other acquisitions, the EDI messages, this EDI message doesn't actually do anything. Um, so when it arrives at Evergreen, it just gives us some data and that data goes into some new tables on the Evergreen side and you can analyze the data in the tables and you can look at what's going to happen in this interface. But if you don't click the receive button or use the receive on scan, it doesn't actually modify any data. So you could you could even have this feature in place and use it simply as a reporting tool or a view only tool and then you know maybe later do the receiving through here so it, you can kind of ease it into the workflow so let me go back here it always wants to start over at the front doesn't it okay okay so then i'll hand it over to paula for any other comments about you know how it's going in the real world I kind of covered um, a few of them just in, in those questions, but I'll, I'll read through it again. Um, our shipments from Baker Taylor all come with the, the super barcode facing out, and that's really, really helpful. We've had one pallet come in that was repackaged by shipping, and they did not face out the barcodes, and I was very unhappy. It's You just have to pull the whole pallet apart and match up all the labels. But so far, almost everything has come facing out. Um, Sometimes the barcodes are damaged and you can't scan them. And you can either type them in 
which is fine, uh, but sometimes they're just completely unreadable. So then I have to kind of set the whole box aside and ask Bill, you know, pull one of the items from it and have him get the container code for me, or I could just manually receive them. That's another process that we haven't decided quite how we're going to handle it going forward. Um, so it doesn't happen that often, which is a relief. Um, I, I unwrap a pallet and then I scan all the barcodes at once so that when I unpack it, everything's just ready. Nobody else has to worry about scanning them. Um, sort a loose sort onto trucks kind of based on the invoice without doing a super huge uh, quantity check. Um, the exceptions, like we talked about, we're still working out how exactly we want to deal with those. Um, and then one of the other kind of um, challenges we're working with is we do Baker and Taylor all ASN. Every other vendor, we're still doing our traditional method, which, you know, it's probably different for you, but we have sort of a labor intensive method of hand checking and writing and, and kind of all this stuff. So keeping that straight is is just one of the things like this is B Baker Taylor. So it's ASN. Um, and then so we have to label trucks that go to catalogers that way as well. This is an ASN truck. So you will not have an invoice to look at and that kind of stuff. That's all kind of internal, but it's what we're dealing with. And then um, it was always the cataloging staff and then sometimes order staff who did receiving. So that would be, you know, they'd have to pull up each line item, each order, manually receive it and then do whatever else is on there. And so that's that's not happening with Baker Taylor. And so far it hasn't been we haven't seen a major um, difference really, except for in the unpacking part, getting rid of the invoice following and just that everything is received. We can put them on trucks much, much faster. It's it's really faster in that regard. Um, we just, the catalogers just got to looking and cataloging the titles. So that's where we'll be able to start testing like actual turnaround time to see if it's faster or what we can do to kind of um, improve it as we go along. Um, I feel like there's one more thing I was going to say about the shipments and barcodes, um, but I forget I forget what it was. So that's kind of our our process now. Um, it's very it's really sort of basic right now, and we're still just fine tuning stuff. But we've had some staffing changes, so it also doesn't make sense to implement a totally new process until we have a full team. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about that or suggestions, I'm open. Um, the super barcode is per, it is per box. So what I've noticed already right off the bat is I'm going to request the bigger tailor sends a smaller sets. So if you have, you know, a shipment that's 20 boxes, you actually do need the invoice, which means you need to know which box the invoice is in. And then you kind of have to wait to make sure you have all the copies before you can put the trucks out with smaller things. I'm going to request 10. Um, it's so much faster. You know, what's, what's in the boxes, you know, how many trucks you need for that. And you can send the trucks out before you're even finished unpacking the whole set as long as you can confirm all the titles are on there so we keep them grouped by title but not in any other order and that's with smaller shipments it's much much faster um so yeah it's per box not per pallet which was what we initially thought i think will evergreen asn provide a way to look at what asn shipments are on their way from baker and taylor well Right now we receive the ASN messages before the shipments arrive. So in that sense, you could say you do have a advanced notification of what's on its way. What I don't have at this point is a, a nice interface where you would go and look at that and see, for example, all the pending ASN messages. So that's something that could be added as a, a new feature to this. And, and I think there are a couple of entry points where we may want to be able to jump, say, from a line item to the ASN messages related to that line item. I don't have that yet. Um, that would solve one of the issues that Paula mentioned earlier, where if you couldn't you couldn't scan the barcode, then if you knew what the line item was, then maybe you could get to it from there. Um, but if we if we had an interface that just showed pending ASN messages, you could go there, and then from that you could see this is all the stuff that's on its way. Now it's not going to tell you much more than that. It's not going to say much or if anything about the shipment itself, other than what's in it and that it's coming. Being able to okay. put in an ASN date range helps to see what's coming and possibly what hasn't shown up that should have, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So a, a kind of a general purpose ASN reporting filtering type interface. 
Have you noticed that the lead time is between what the lead time is between when you receive the ASM message versus when you actually receive the box? Uh, no, that's a good question. Um, right now it's just a few days. <clears throat> um, I don't know what it is typically. I will, I will jot that down as something we can measure. Um, and I could pull that from the database too. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I was curious how often the vendors are sending out those messages. The, which messages? The one you were talking to Bill about the, like what's pending? We do get ASN daily from Baker and Taylor. Uh, I don't remember how many a day we get. Yeah. Oh, and one of the things, this is what I was wanting, was going to mention earlier. The exceptions page, when it shows what's shipped, so it shows what's shipped and what we've received. And those are, I don't even think I've ever seen a difference. I've seen a few as examples, um, but it doesn't tell you, you know, what the order was. So it'll say they shipped five and you'll get five, but that could be only maybe the full order was for 15. So it doesn't really notify you if it's a partial of an order. I haven't really seen a problem with that yet, um, necessarily. And even then, I don't think it would be a problem. It would just be more something to note um, for who, whenever we decide we're doing quantity verification, if it's with catalogers, if it's with unpackers, we would need to know that. Um, so that's something we're keeping in mind too. So if you have questions or suggestions about that from your workflow. And that is that is an assumption baked into it as well that a shipment may come over multiple or sorry an order may come over multiple shipments so it's not a problem if it's a partial right it's something we're kind of used to anyways yeah so it's more just no, like notable as opposed to something that needs to be solved uh, I don't know what their schedule is I'd have to look to see um, but we do we track of course the receive date and everything of the ASN messages in the database so um uh, and of course the logs and everything so we could we could figure out what that schedule is but i don't know off the top of my head i think we're fetching every half hour or looking every half hour but then as far as i know they all come at two in the morning yeah that's a good question it would help me too because i don't always know what shipments are coming in um, we have, you know, like a mail room with a receiver person who contacts, she's in contact with the shipping vendors. <clears throat> and so I'm always a little, I, I depend on her. So if I knew the ASN, that would, that would be helpful. So that's a good point. I'm glad you brought it up. I think that's pretty much all I had. Oh, challenges. Here we go. Exceptions. Um, we kind of talked about that. I don't see a ton of exceptions. I know some library systems automatically print them out with the few that we have. I don't think it would work. And then just with the volume that we get, printing out anything upon receipt would kind of slow us down more, I think, depending on we would have to sort any kind of papers. Um, <clears throat> the other challenge is our receiving process was never really the slowest part of our, our process that's that's cataloging. And I'm not sure if that's the same with everybody. Um, you know, receiving was just one click. You know, you verify the invoice, you receive it. And that's kind of where our exceptions would originate if they weren't caught at unpacking. So now that's kind of just shifted. Um, so now everything's received. People don't have to do that one step. And then exceptions now kind of our invoicing specialist, she'll notice if something's not received, if not all the copies were received. So she'll investigate those. Um, so it's not a huge dramatic shift either way. Um, it's not it's not made things worse and it's not saved us tons of days right off the bat. I think it'll be an incremental change, especially once we get more vendors in. And then I think once we adjust one of our workflows where we have additional copies, um, adding those to a different work process line, I think will help too, because then everything will just be received. They won't need to be cataloged. They can go straight to processing. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking forward to in the future is where I think we'll see some big numbers in terms of time saved. So yeah, the shifting of the workflows has been challenging and deciding how to handle exceptions. Um, but most of the other part has just been super easy. I mean, the interface is wonderful. It's very clean. It's not cluttered. Um, we've had some issues with our scanners, but I, I think that might just be the scanners we have and not necessarily <laughs> the software of any kind. Um, so yeah, just minor, minor glitches to be fair. 
but nothing big. So yeah. Speaking of other vendors, um, as soon as we got all rolling with Baker and Taylor, um, uh, we put out feelers to some of our other vendors, and we are these are the ones that we have had conversations with, um, and not just it'd be nice to do this conversations, but uh, sharing sample data, um, you know, back and forth about the technical aspects of the of the messages and how kind of what we're expecting and based on what they know. Um, so we've had, you know, real progress in all three of these vendors so far, at least one of them expected to have something this summer that we could look at. Uh, but this is a new type of message that a lot of the vendors don't just offer out of the box. So we're, so part of this, you know, this project is not just getting it working with Baker and Taylor, but hopefully getting it to work with as many vendors as we can. And then, you know, Paula doesn't have this workflow for ASN and this workflow for everything else. And if we can get it all consolidated into one workflow, um, then that will be a big win in the long run. So that's coming down the road. Um, if, if there are changes for that that we need and the code side, you know, the, I'll, I'll post those to Launchpad. Um, so kind of, you know, keep an eye out for that. Um, and then that is the end of the slides. Um, so looking back at chat here. Yeah, I'm in, I'm impressed, Dustin, that, that you receive things fully processed in catalog. I think, I mean, it really does, it takes it from whatever time you have. I mean, it's just seconds. You scan the barcode, everything is in Evergreen as received. So, I mean, your, your workflow at that point might just be, you know, identifying exceptions or, or taking care of any damaged items that come in a shipment or something, but it sounds like it would be <laughs> really helpful for you. Um, Cause it's just, you know, it's a, as long as it takes to, to scan a barcode, that's as fast as it is. Yeah. Staffing challenges. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm in unpacking. Um, yeah. It's, it's, we're, all, I think, I don't know of a place right now that's fully staffed anywhere. So it is, you know, having that ability to go from however long it takes you now to just a scan. Very, very quick, very helpful. So, yeah. I agree, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I believe you quickly mentioned alerts for holds as you check in through ASN. Oh, holds. I don't think we've ever talked about that, Bill. Mm -mm. Triggering holds. We'd have to think about that. Right now, I believe our processing staff does it. So that's the, I think the last stop they do, they attach our barcodes and our um, spine labels, and then they check them in and, and trigger holds. If it could be done, my only question would be, who would then put the hold slip, because we have paper hold slips, who would put those in there? Would it be the unpacking staff? Um, or would they all get printed and just, yeah, I don't know. It would be a big discussion. Most of the time, these discussions have been, um, where are we shifting work? You know, is it a process that someone used to do and now this person does it or this group does it? So that I think that would be a similar discussion. You know, would it be pages and and processing staff now, or would it be catalogers or would it be unpacking? But I'm writing it down because it's a, a good discussion to have. Tiffany says, on the receiving screen, could you only receive some of the titles and not all of them? Yeah, I think so. I could do, I could unclick the receive on scan, but I would have to have already opened the box well, or sometimes the boxes come pretty damaged and you know that it's going to be, <laughs> there's going to be some damage in the books. So I could uncheck receive on scan. Um, scan the barcode, run it through, and then it would show me the things. And then I think I could, I could change the, the receiving there. That's actually, I had that happen yesterday. So that's a good example. I might keep my eyes peeled for that and see if, how that works. Yeah, I can c confirm right now that um, it doesn't let you deselect specific items for batch receiving. Um, so these checkboxes don't, okay. won't impact the receive all line items button. Uh, so that would be a new feature. Okay. 
Uh, so I guess by default, maybe they would all be selected. And then you can go in here, deselect one, and then receive selected or something like that. Okay. So receive all items is receive everything I've checked, not receive everything in this grid. No, receive all is receive everything in this grid. The checkboxes don't do anything at this point. How would this work with invoicing? Would staff still need to go into the indul? Uh, yeah, we're still. Um, the invoices go right now. We, we take them directly to our invoicing staff, and she has to go through and open each invoice in Evergreen, and then prorate it and all that stuff, and then close it out. So she she also double checks the quantity to make sure um, there it wasn't a partial or we're still not waiting for something. So she can see, okay, five were received. I can receive five invoice. I can close the invoice because we only ordered five. Um, so yeah, it's still, I think we have some dreams in the future of automatically marking those as paid, but it's sort of pie in the sky and a long ways off. Probably works better for libraries with separation of duties. Yeah, maybe. I think it would depend yeah yeah if you if you had to invoice at the point of receiving um i don't know you'd really have to track your your turnaround times to see if it actually helped or not depending on the size of your staff because yeah right now you know we unpack them and and we kick them out of unpacking so it's like <laughs> not our problem anymore unless there's exceptions so yeah if you were if you were the same staff um i could see that being a little more challenging Anybody else? I don't see any other questions or anything. But I'm happy to take emails if you want to contact me after and ask questions, follow up questions, or have discussions about it. I'm happy to share everything we we've, we've gone through and what we're still going through and what we hope to do. So you can reach out anytime. Yeah, I think that's it for me as well. Um, finished a little early. Uh, it's targeted at Evergreen three dot. Presumably version 3.10, the next release. Um, so we'll, we'll, I mean, I, I would expect it to get merged. It's pretty much ready to go, but we'll see. Yeah, it's been fun. I appreciate everybody's questions and stuff. It, it definitely makes it less daunting to be able to talk about it more instead of just <laughs> kind of talking at you. So appreciate all the questions and suggestions and stuff. It's been great. Yeah. Thank you both. Would you yeah. like to both put your emails in the chat box at this point so people can contact you exactly. if they don't already have that? Because I'm sure you'll get follow-up questions. This has been super to kind of see in action. As you can see, you've inspired a lot of questions. Yeah. I, interest. I welcome them all. <laughs> yeah. I welcome them all as especially suggestions and even, you know, the questions also just inspire me to think of things differently too so because we are still in the middle of it and it's it we're still working through it so yeah questions can help clarify things so yeah thanks everyone fantastic thank, thank you. you both <laughs> appreciate it have a good day thanks you too bye